Today our topic is on pulmonary embolism. We discuss in this video, Introduction of Pulmonary Embolism Pathophysiology Sources of Emboli Factors Associated with Pulmonary Embolism Clinical Features Treatment So let's go to start our lecture. Pulmonary embolism. Mechanical obstruction of a pulmonary artery or arterio, usually results from the entry of blood clots, fat, tumor cells, air, amniotic fluid or foreign material into the venous system. The most common cause of death within the first 10 postoperative days. Massive pulmonary embolism causes rapid respiration and cardiovascular collapse and death. Smaller pulmonary embolism may cause infarction of lung tissue. Pathophysiology. Embolic occlusion in the pulmonary circulation increase dead space and increase PACO. Result in hypoxemia. Increased pulmonary vascular resistance by reducing the cross-sectional area of the pulmonary vasculature causing reflexes and humeral vasoconstriction. Reflex bronchoconstriction further increase area with low VQ ratio. The next effect is an increase in pulmonary shunt and hypoxemia. The affected area losses its sufficient within hours and may become atelectic within 24 to 48 hours. Pulmonary infarction occurs at the embolus involves the large vessels and collateral blood flow is insufficient. Sources of emboli Clot from lower extremities, above knee, pelvic veins. Or less commonly from right-sided heart. Venous stasis. Hypercoagulability. Intraoperatively. Deep venous thrombosis. Fat embolism. Air embolism. Factors associated with pulmonary embolism. Prolonged bed rest. Postpartum state. Fracture. Surgery of lower extremity. Carcinoma. Heart failure. Obesity. Surgery lasting more than 30 minutes. Hypercoagulability. Antithrombin 3 deficiency. Protein C deficiency. Protein S deficiency. Plasminogen. Activator deficiency. Clinical features. In small pulmonary embolism, pleuritic chest pain, hemoptysis, dyspnea, mild pyrexia, massive pulmonary embolism, cyanosis, hypotension, chest pain, tachycardia, raised JVP, bronchospasm, third and fourth heart sound, pleural rub, arterial blood gas, hypoxemia. Hypercapnia, metabolic acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, chest x ray, enlarged proximal pulmonary artery with peripheral oliguria, a wedge shaped density with an infarct, atelectasis with an elevated diaphragm. Electrocardiogram, right axis deviation, RBBB, dull peak T wave. Definitive diagnosis by pulmonary angiogram. Helical CD scan. Deferential diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. Myocardial infarction. Pericarditis. Congestive heart failure. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Pneumonia. Pneumothorax. Anxiety. Hyperventilation syndrome. Rib fracture. Treatment. The best treatment for pulmonary embolism is prevention. Immediate cardiac pulmonary resuscitation if required. A pericardial thump may break up a large pulmonary embolism and improve circulation. Oxygen therapy. Maintenance of circulation with intravenous fluids, if required ionotropic drugs and analgesia. Anticoagulation therapy, heparin 5000 units subcutaneously every 12 hours. Postoperatively in high risk patient. Low molecular weight heparin is as effective and is given subcutaneously at a fixed dose without laboratory monitoring. LMWH is started either 12 hours before surgery, 12 to 24 hours after surgery, or at 50% of the usually dose 4 to 6 hours after surgery. All patients should start warfarin therapy concurrent with starting heparin therapy. 
warfarin should be continued for 3 to 12 months. Thrombolytic with tissue plasminogen activator or streptokinase is indicated for patient with massive PE. Pulmonary embolectomy indicated for patient with massive embolism and when thrombolytic therapy is contraindicated. Inferior vena cava umbrella filter may be placed to prevent recurrent pulmonary emboli. Thanks for watching. Anesthesia with Dr. T. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thanks.